We truly live in a dark time for Linux. The disgusting Rust language is entering the kernel. System D still exists and is heavily being used. And Linus Torvalds is thinking of doing the unthinkable, a truly evil action that will destroy Linux, dropping support for the i486. Now, some of you may be saying, what in the world is an i486? Well, another name for it is the Intel 486. And this is a CPU platform that predates many of my viewers, including myself, by at least a decade or so. So this was originally released back in 1989 and was the wildly popular successor to the wildly popular i386. And while being long dead for most home users for at least two or so decades, being such a prolific CPU, Intel actually kept manufacturing it until 2007. So there is without a doubt 486 systems still in production today. And if not these specific Intel chips, there are modern clones like the Vortex 86 chips and modern Intel platforms like the Intel Quark based on the i486 pipeline. Some of these do report slightly differently though, like I think the Intel Quark sometimes reports as a Pentium. But for better or worse, this ancient platform is being kept alive by dollar store life support. Now Linus Torvalds isn't the kind of maintainer that likes to just kill off random platforms for seemingly no reason. So he didn't bring this up directly, instead it was brought up in relation to a separate issue entirely. Working on this patch set, he noticed a bit of an issue. There was an atomic read function, which wasn't working the way that an atomic read actually should be functioning for it to be atomic. But I guess this issue has been known about for quite a while because another developer with the name of Peter Zilstra already had a patch set set up that fixed exactly this issue. But it wasn't exactly a modern patch set. He's sort of been just sitting on it for a while, not really doing anything with it because it just wasn't high priority. Linus knew it was an old patch set because it was using Compare Exchange 64 rather than the tri variant, which modern coding in the kernel is going to be using. So Linus's assumption is it's an old patch set, but it's still been rebased to work with the current version of the kernel. And basically, yeah, it's an old patch set. You're not in fact the first to point that out, but he was gonna make sure he had some time to fix it and respin and send it out. This is as good a time as any to get rid of carrying these patches myself. But Linus had a slightly different plan. Yes, he could go and do that, but why bother? Linus realized that even if he did fix his patches, it would still result in the loop inside of that code being duplicated. And the problem is being caused by continuing to support such ancient hardware. So when we're talking about the i486 class devices, they're going to be using CMPXCHG64, Compare and Exchange. Now Compare and Exchange does basically what the name would suggest. It takes two sets of bytes and then compares them and then can exchange them if they meet a certain condition. And when we're talking about these really old CPUs, they are going to be using the 64 variant. But the issue doesn't occur if we move up the support a little bit, still keeping 32-bit support, but bringing it into the Pentium class, moving up the minimum support to CMPXCHG 8B with the 8B standing for 8 bytes. And doing this would allow us to get rid of all of the emulate 64-bit atomics with CLI slash STI, knowing that nobody has SMP on those CPUs anyway, and implement a generic x86 32XCHG setup using that tri CMP XCHG 64 loop. Now, some of those things probably made no sense whatsoever. So SMP stands for symmetric multiprocessing which basically means having multiple CPUs accessing the same resources, otherwise known as a multi-core CPU. But when we're talking about older systems, this would traditionally be multiple physical CPUs. And STI being not that other STI, this STI is standard text interface. I think most, possibly all distros, 
already enable x86 PAE anyway, which makes the x86 CMP XCHD64 part of the base requirement. So PAE is the page address extension, basically allowing your CPU to address more than 4 gigabytes, which if you have a modern hard drive, a modern amount of RAM, pretty much anything involving data on your system, you probably have more than 4 gigabytes. Not that I'm convinced most distros even do 32-bit development anyway these days. So there actually are still a lot of 32-bit distros out there. Generally, they're treated sort of as like the second-class citizen and don't really get that much attention. Debian has a 32-bit version. Arch has one that is like a separate project, but still technically a part of Arch. And Gen 2 has one as well. And there are plenty of other ones out there, but it's definitely not anybody's main focus. And considering we got rid of i386 support back in 2012, maybe it's time to get rid of the i486 support in 2022. Now, like with the i486, the i386 actually were still in production until 2007. So for those really weird random systems that were still using i386, this was only five years after the CPU stopped being produced. It wasn't being used on desktop systems, mind you, but it still did have a use. That way, we could finally get rid of Config Math Emulation 2. I love dumb but necessary features like this. So a lot of the old CPUs had an issue with floating point arithmetic because a lot of them didn't have a math coprocessor, an FPU, whatever you want to call it. So the 486DX and Pentium processors did have a math coprocessor built in, but the 486SX and 386 do not, unless you added a 487DX or a 387 respectively. So if you wanted to do floating point arithmetic on one of these CPUs, Basically, it has to be emulated through integer arithmetic, and it's really slow, but it works. And that's exactly what this does. Now, this is absolutely not the first time that anybody suggested dropping 486 support from the Linux kernel. The last time it happened was January of 2021 by Arnd Bergman in a thread titled, Old Platforms, Bring Out Your Dead. After 5.10 was officially declared an LTS kernel, I had a look around the ARM platforms that look like they've not seen any patches from their maintainers or users that are actually running the hardware for at least five years, so 2015 or earlier. I made some statistics and lists of my LWN article last year, so I thought I'd share a summary here for discussion about what we should remove. As I found three years ago, when I removed several CPU architectures, it makes sense to do this in bulk to simplify a scripted search for device drivers, header files, and kconfig options that become unused in the process. So most of this is focused around ARM support. These are the platforms that basically have not changed in a very long time, some of them basically not getting any patches after they were first introduced. Now, some other ARM platforms and various other platforms are still being worked on, but the work is sort of like hit and miss and nobody's really developing it. There's like a couple of patches here and there and maybe someone's using the hardware, but it's not really a big focus. But there's other things as well. For example, platforms like the x86 platform, where older systems are still supported, but the CPUs used in the x86 platform are almost exclusively considerably newer. For a home system, I think you'd be hard pressed to find anybody using anything older than a Pentium. And when we're talking about industrial systems, whether that's a factory arm or anything else like that, it's very likely that it's not actually running a modern version of the kernel. It's likely it was deployed like 15 plus years ago and it's running whatever it was running back when it was first released. Now at this stage, nothing is set in stone, but Linus does seem like he's very heavily considering it. I suspect we can just say, oh well, use an LTS kernel. So if this does get removed, the last LTS kernel that will support it is likely going to be the 6.1 LTS. 
And when this last got discussed a year ago, it did get a lot of feedback and actually a little bit of pushback. So there were these random people, like one or two people for each of the architectures that did still rely on that support in a modern kernel. But when we're talking about such a small user base with a project the scale of the Linux kernel, it becomes a very important question whether you actually want to keep it around. Because this hardware isn't being made new, so it's not like new features are going to be supported. They could always just go and use an older version of the kernel. So the question ultimately becomes, is there any cost in keeping this code around? Is it detrimental to supporting new features on new platforms that people are actually using? And if it is detrimental, is it so detrimental that you can't just go and work around it to keep that old support in the kernel? If the answer to that is no, it's not really a big deal, then, you know, just keep it there. No one really cares about it and no one's paid attention to it anyway. But if the answer is yes, now you have to make a decision. And this seems to be the decision that Linus has made. So I really don't think i486 class hardware is relevant anymore. Yes, I'm sure it exists. Macy J being an example, this is someone mentioned earlier in the thread who actually was still using this hardware and is still using it today. But from a kernel development standpoint, I don't think they are really relevant. It's one user doing it. It's not really important at the scale of the kernel and all of the people who are going to benefit from the kernel improving. At some point, people have them as museum pieces, they might as well run museum kernels. Moving up to requiring CMP xchg 8 b doesn't sound unreasonable to me. But the funniest thing about all of this is later in the thread, Linus realizes that a modern kernel probably isn't going to run properly on a 486 anyway. In fact, I don't understand how... In fact, I don't understand how current kernels work on an i486 at all, since it looks like exit to user mode prepare, arch exit to user mode prepare, ends up having an unconditional RDTSC instruction in it. I'm guessing you don't have randomized case stack offset enabled. In other words, our non-Pentium support is actively buggy and broken right now. This is not some theoretical issue, but very much a look ma, this has never been tested and cannot actually work issue that nobody has ever noticed because nobody really cares. So technically they are trying to support 486s in the modern kernel, but it's so buggy that... Basically, they're not supporting them anyway, so unless they're going to actively go and make it better, maybe we should just drop it. And that's the kind of maintenance burden we simply shouldn't have. No developer actually cares, correctly. Nobody really tests that situation, also correctly, it's old and irrelevant hardware, but it also means that code just randomly doesn't actually work. So if this does remain buggy, which it probably will, and does end up being dropped, which it probably will be, there are still operating systems available that you can run on a system this old. For example, FreeDOS. It's DOS, it's made to run on this old hardware, and FreeDOS is still being developed. Also things like NetBSD. So let me know your thoughts. Do you think 486 support should just be dropped outright, or should it be fixed and make it so a modern kernel actually will run properly on 486 class hardware? I would love to know, let me know down below. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video, and if you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.